What's up guys, YST here and welcome back to another Raid Shadow Legends video. I hope everyone's having an amazing day. Today we're going to be speaking about Newt, the recent fusion champion that hopefully everybody that's watching this video managed to get their hands on. Let me know the ways that you've been utilizing yours. Have you been building in for the finite hard or the spiders or the hydra or the clan boss? Because this champion is one of those can be universally used for all of these encounters, right? And as you see here, we're in an unkillable team without the Fushan in a Demifa style composition, um, utilizing Roz and Scarhide as well, who is also a fusion champion. And we have well exceeded a wonky on the Ultra Nightmare clan boss, and he is absolutely putting in the numbers in the build that we put today. Now, I just want to give a quick disclaimer. Um, in this video, I will be focusing a bit on the mid-game kind of things in terms of gear. And then, of course, if you're end-game, you could be bringing up those stats and, you know, fully mid-maxing and optimizing your newt to deal the most damage as possible or the speed thresholds or whatever kind of content you're facing. But I do also feel like it's important to showcase reasonable builds that people could replicate before they get the more end-game gear, right? But you guys let me know, is that something that you're interested in down the line when I'm showcasing champions or would you like to see a blend of the both, an example of more of an end-game and a mid-game in a sense in the same video? Um, it's something that I'll note for the future. But look at this, 90 million. We've got around 9 turns left. Hopefully we can exceed 100 million. I think I've seen around 108 million. Um, but we're facing the Force Affinity now. So our, our Seeker is getting weak hits throughout the course of the battle, as you see there. But what I've done is I've utilized a Reflex set in order to practically get almost like double damage with the amount of Blessed Bashes we can get out with that A3 and just cycling that skill more efficiently. And of course, if you can utilize refresh accessories as well, it's going to be phenomenal. But I will explain how to utilize them in more of a traditional style team. And I'll also leave one in the description below for you guys to check out if you don't have an unkillable team, right? Which is understandable. Like, it took me a long time to get my first unkillable team. I, took, I think it took me two years to get Manita. Finally got him. And then we managed to get Demifa from a fusion, but I had to use her for that fusion. And then I got a later down the line. And then since then, I went over to the dark side, guys. Yes. It just makes it easier, right? To showcase these kind of builds. But look at this damage. 350,000 per hit. It's like phenomenal numbers, right? And if I had this on the free-to-play, which I didn't go for. Um, I'll save that for another video. The free-to-play shenanigans that's going on. But he's really putting in the work. And I'm pretty sure he's going to do the same thing for you guys as well. For anyone that's been trying to progress in the Demon Lord. Because when we speak about traditional teams, he also, also utilizes self-counter-attack. He's got a weaken of his own. He has decreased attack. And of course, the enemy max HP nukes. That's scaling very well here. So can really keep you alive in those compositions as well, right? Granted, you've got the correct speed tune and fundamentals around him. Whether that be increased defense, ally protection, and all of that good stuff. But over the course of the battle, look at his damage, man. So we are going to hit 100 million. Let's go. On the Force Affinity as well. To be fair, I should have just kind of seen this coming uh, with the numbers I've seen on Void. But, you know, I thought maybe the weak hits would play into a factor with Seeker. But it seems to be holding up pretty well here, right? Holding up pretty well. We'll let him go the full way. I was going to cut it off maybe like a few turns early. But, you know, I've already been sitting there 21 minutes thinking, when do I click record on this video? Like, when's the perfect time for the intro? Uh, I feel hopefully we got it right. Hopefully we got it right. Uh, but I'm, I'm so happy to get him. I'm yet to build my uh, Phantom Shogun's team. Um, I did some stuff on the test server utilizing newts. Uh, but I haven't actually climbed the floors myself yet. Because I'm really dry on resources. Are you guys in the same boat as well? It's like, coming off that fusion, I looked at my silver. I was like, rubbing my eyes. Is that right? Like, 600k. Let's go. I can rank up an amulet to rank 12 and stuff like that. Oh, man. It was a, it was a hard time, man. That um, artifact accessory events the enhancement events those ones completely got me it's like every time i signed into the game accessories accessories artifact enhancements take my silver we need a damn silver dungeon in this game right we definitely need one like we're just blabbing on like come on guys can you speed up this clan boss run so we can break down newts please uh rosin do any of you guys still use rosin in your clan boss teams I actually do, like, without the memes and stuff. Like, of course, there's other options out there, whether that be Draco more for maybe just utilizing Newt's Weaken, paired with someone like Farrak in the fight who can place a drop defense, and he also brings an ally attack. Could basically be any DPS, which what makes this team uh, very viable. I will briefly show the speeds of this team, by the way, but I've got a more dedicated video on the guide for anybody that is interested in replicating it. 
it's pretty good, right? Because we don't have the Deacon in there. I bet anyone that doesn't have it. Um, we don't have a Fushan. He's a legendary champion um, in the team as well. Who I do have. Just kind of chose to keep this one, I guess. All right. Can we get past 108 million? It doesn't look like we're going to, as to be expected. Um, but there's other things I wanted to speak about today as well in terms of blessings, which I'm not sure exactly which one is better here for Clan Boss. But there's definitely some um, alternations we can make here um, outside of the Brimstone. So here we go. We're closing in here now. Oh, we've got to hit 108 million. If we get a Brimstone proc, we get 108 million. Did we get a refresh as well? Ah, oh, we didn't get it. All right, that's, that's pretty consistent then in terms of damage that I was seeing. Pretty consistent there. Oh, and he survived past the 50 turns. Talk about tanky newts. Look at this. Can we get one more max HP in? Ah, oh, we didn't get it. We didn't get it, but... 108.8 .8 million damage and as you see here newt popping out 54 million in this unkillable style composition and i think that's really impressive right like if we just head over to the builds now i'm actually very impressed by that damage i think it's about 2 million more than i've seen prior um so yeah two keys 217 million obviously 108 million a pop um kind of makes sense right so now you can gauge what kind of damage i was seeing on the different affinities so heading into the clan boss team now, it's not our actual clan boss video, by the way, guys, it's, we're going to be taking on everything. Um, this is the build that I built for clan boss, and it really comes down to the style of composition you're using. Like if you're going traditional, could you use reflex? Absolutely. Still a possibility. Um, but it really comes down to, do you require the decrease attack and the weaken at a specific given time? Do you have another champion that can pair with decrease attack? So you've got two champions alternating. Therefore, you can first priority the bless bash and just focus on his max HP. And then just getting this out when you can, which is definitely an option as well. Or simply, do you not have reflex gear and you just want to go for maybe uh, perception? You want to be able to land your debuffs because you're pre progressing in the game, right? That's completely valuable as well um, before you get into the later stages of the game. So it really comes down to the individual as a player. Are you relying on the debuffs for one? Do you need the accuracy? Therefore, you don't need perception, right? If you're only using it for clan boss. Um, do you just want to amplify damage? I feel like reflex is the best way for demon lord. Apart from, um, if you want to use Relentless, you can. Unless you've got a style composition that enables you to do that in like some of those unkillable teams where your DPS option can afford to have Reflex or Relentless, sorry, before the block damage goes up. So there's definitely um, scenarios where you could alternate this to a Relentless build, but I personally would be sticking with this um, to maximize the max HP that you'll be getting on your champion. But in terms of like relatable, um, I did say that I'll be focusing more on the mid game today in terms of gear. Um, I think I hit it kind of bang on the head in a sense, mid to late game. Um, so we got 192 speed, which is kind of easy to get to, right? Um, especially if you're hitting any kind of Ultra Nightmare Demon Lord. We got 100% crit rate, of course. We're sitting at 216% crit damage. But in my particular builds that I would be using on my account, I'm always sitting at at least 235 to 240% as long as I got like a decreased defense out there or a weaken. So that's basically how I would be optimizing on my account. And then, of course, you want to be focusing on defense stats as well. I'm a little bit overkill here, but it's just because we're going so low speeds, we can afford to have defense percent on the boots. Therefore, we can basically see these kind of numbers, right? Uh, we've got decent accuracy, of course, just to meet those thresholds to place the decrease attack or the weaken, which we didn't need in this team in particular, to be fair. Um, but really, if you've got someone else who dropped the fence and he's your weaken option, you still want to be able to place that to optimize your mastery procs and your raw damage, right? So I feel like this is a pretty good um, build for Ultra Nightmare. I mean, as you see there, um, really performed for our team. And in terms of the rest of the team, I'll just quickly show you the speeds. But I'll leave the full video in the description below for anybody that's interested. So I'm just going to go into the presets, actually. So just for a glimpse, um, so our DPS number one in Newt is going at 192 speed. Raz and Skarhide is going at 212, but they could be in any of the situations here. But I always say that your drop defense champion should be going before your second DPS, simply for the reason that you want to optimize their damage potential straight after they place it. So really up to you, but these two slots are very flexible in terms of who you want to be in those specific uh, positions. Seeker, 209 speed, pretty slow as well, right? Nothing crazy going on here. But because we don't have like a speed lead or any kind of like Fushan or something, for example, um, we have to up the speeds of the Mipha to 316, which is pretty high. But once you do it once, it's going to be very cool for your team. 
Works for Brutal, Nightmare, Ultra Nightmare, Full Auto, any kind of affinities, you're good to go. And this all comes into fruition also with Airest going at 284, um, who's basically going to work as our cleanser and also a pretty good DPS with increased speed as well. And she's able to like take off those stuns and those decreased speeds, right? So a really cool team. And of course, if you've got someone like a Fushan or whoever that may be in your lead position, the speeds of these will drop down uh, pretty significantly. But there we go. That was the team that I like to use on my um, account. So what we're going to do is we'll talk about the masteries first and then I'm going to switch up the build and then um, go into some other areas of the game here. So Newt, why, what makes him so amazing? On his A1 with the Dwarven Might, he attacks one enemy three times and EG has a 100% chance of decreasing the target's turn meter by 15%. So for anybody that's been struggling with the finite dungeon, right? And you're like, damn, I'm really struggling to keep this um, shield down and it just keeps going up. Well, utilizing this A1 is really going to give you that full control. Granted, you've potentially got decreased speed out there or other champions to help him out. You'll definitely have a lot of control here paired with multi-hitters, which he is as well. Um, also, each has a 100% chance of applying a freeze debuff, which is basically going to work in a very similar way, but for the hard mode of the finite. So for anyone that is kind of reaching those floors and starting to build your squads, he is one of the best champions in the game, if not the best, to keep that turn meter down on the hardest stages of the finite. So very universal for progression for the state up to stage 25, and then also carries that same value up until stage 10 of the hard for more of those end game players, which I'm a big fan of, kind of caters to both sides of the pond there. Um, leading into Fury of the King, apart from Clan Boss, this still has tremendous value. Think about the Hydra Boss, right? Decreased attack for damage mitigation, weakened for amplifying damage by 25%, counter attack on himself to just lead in and deal some more damage. Some really good um, potentials coming out of this A2, even for like the Doom Tower or just bosses in general. A big fan of Fury of the King here. A Blessed Bash, money scaling ability, attacks one enemy three times, mitigates the defense by up to 30%, um, stacking from 3% up to that um, upon each hit. And then each hit also heals this champion by 30% of the damage dealt, which is of course literally astronomical because it's an enemy max HP skill, very similar to Cold Heart, Royal Guard, Acrisia's, really going to pump out the work. And... You know, one of the best, if not the best, max HP champion for one ability in the game alongside Acrisia. So phenomenal skill. Um, no holding back when counterattacking deals 100% instead of 75%. So you don't have none of that mitigation coming out for like the Demon Lord when you're trying to optimize your A1 damage. So overall, the synergy flows very well and great for all players. Accuracy in Dungeons pairs very well for the Fire Knight once again, or simply the Dragon Slayer, or anywhere you're struggling, if you can't reach those accuracy thresholds, or simply the Phantom Shogun's Grove, or the Sand Devil's Necropolis, if you're wanting to use your debuffs, right? But, you know, in some Shogun teams, you're pretty much one-shotting in around two turns, um, once you get the reset on, so you might not be relying on the accuracy, but definitely nice to have in there for some damage reduction for the decreased attack. Um, Brimstone um, is what I chose to use today, and this is very viable for like boss encounters, right? Um, simply, well, simple reason being, we're already building accuracy on this champion, which since the changes, you're going to need that in order to play Smite. But obviously, once you get to a higher star, it's protected and guaranteed, meaning you do not need accuracy. So, really good option, but for me personally, I feel like Phantom Touch. So, has a chance of inflicting bonus damage to one enemy whenever this champion hits enemy targets. When hitting multiple targets at once, the only champion will receive bonus damage one turn cooldown. The bonus damage is proportional to this champion's attack and has a chance of inflicting an instant bonus damage on the second hit with a higher awakening bonus. So, obviously, the higher you get, the more value you're going to get. But I might be switching over to Phantom Touch in the foreseeable future. But for me personally, I feel like Brimstone, uh, Phantom Touch... Um, but let me know, guys, anything else you'd probably go for here? Maybe even Soul Reap if you're falling short on a specific boss. Maybe, maybe for the Phantom Shogun's growth. If you can't literally, if you're falling short by a margin, if he's coming in with that final hit, maybe Soul Reap could be an option. I actually use that on my Mithrala Lifebane. Um, really good option there. So, Masteries, um, I have gone for. A Giant Slayer heading down here. Um, obviously, we're doing triple hits everywhere. We're going to be optimizing our damage from here. We've got a Life Drinker. Heals by 5% damage inflicted when attacking with 50% HP or less. Has very well with his A3 skill for the heals as well. Um, I've gone for the support tree. 
This isn't really going to help us too much. Well, it does for the decrease attack and the weaken. But you don't really need Sniper. Granted that you've got um, fully booked on your champion. But Master Hex are definitely valuable. And Defense Tree... I don't know. It really comes down to your discretion, but I feel like if you've already got a counter-attack on, you don't really need to rely on retribution and deterrence because you've already got it on, right, for counter-attacks. So, yeah, really down to your discretion, but I personally would be staying on the support tree, especially if you're trying to get more of the endgame stuff done, right, to reach those thresholds. So, all right then, I've just up to speed to around 245 or so, still use utilizing Reflex. But if we just head into um, some other builds here that I would actually be recommending, there's stuff such as lethal, right? Like if you don't have um, drop defense or weaken, I would probably be looking towards savage or lethal gear to ignore a bunch of defense. And it also gives you crit rate plus 10% to alleviate some of that intensive stats that you might be falling short on in order to mid max. Because trying to reach these kind of speed thresholds for the end game dungeons is definitely very hard. But just tone it down a notch according to the kind of content that you're hitting, right? Um, and then, of course, you could be going for Relentless, which I wanted to showcase today. Definitely optimal for stuff like the Fire Knight and stuff like that because you're getting extra turn potentials or even the Hydra Boss. But one thing is you can't actually farm Relentless. So kind of showcasing that and then maybe you can't reach the stats in that gear set. It's kind of hard, right? Although Reflex, you can farm from the Ice Golem. So it's something that you could get over time by simply farming a dungeon throughout fusions or just in your spare time. But... Something like Relentless, I'll be doing for stuff like Hydra Boss or Fire Knight. Reflex for more Clan Boss and that kind of area. And then maybe Savage and Lethal for more single target encounters, such as the Spider, if I don't have drop defense in the team. So that's basically the builds that I'll be kind of utilizing. I've not gone crazy crit damage here. We've got around 210% or so because of the speed thresholds that we go in. And I double ones I do have, but it's more Ascension based, of like six star Ascension gear, which I didn't really want to showcase today. So, all right, um, let's go into the spider first. Uh, we go into here. And he's very good for stage 25, but we're going to go to stage 10 with a team like this is what I like to utilize. And he really puts in the work. And this is probably a comp I will be using until I get my second burn activator. Then I won't actually need a reset champion, right? Uh, but you could also just use a... I've seen it done with renegades and champions like that. So, sort of boom, boom, boom. The Hex is spreading that damage from those single target attacks and all the Spiderlings get destroyed. We're then going to cleanse with Mithrala Lifebane after this. So boom. Burn's going to go out from Ignatius, which is a non-resistible, very similar to Walking Tomb Dreng. The Bless Bash comes in once again and finishes up the job for us. So really phenomenal uh, team, but oh, I was hoping it's going to be accuracy for my Yumiko. So boom. Hex going to go out. And that could be any Hexer, by the way, guys. Doesn't have to be Mithrala Lifebane. The only reason that I've utilized her is, is for that cleanse. As you see right there, um, my Newt is getting uh, debuffed, right? So here we go. Reset coming through. Going off there. And boom. We didn't even need the second max HP there. So really comes down to the RNG and how much burn detonations that we get there. But going into like stage 25, I'm trying to, going to try to utilize a different kind of team here. So let's just say, well, this is something that I did use for Spider 25, which did work. I guess we could showcase this. So let's see what kind of numbers we're hitting with 210% crit damage. And then I'm going to put drop defense and weaken to kind of show you how if you can implement drop defense into the team, you can reach the cap. And it comes down to you guys as the players of how you want to optimize. So, oh wait, wrong floor, wrong floor. <laughs> Not 25, we need to do 24 with him. Because of the affinity disadvantages. All right, here we go. So we're going to open up with the poisons. Burns go through. Bless Bash. So 600,000, 601, 666. As you see, it's fluctuating because we haven't got any drop defense. I haven't got any savage. And this is just um, a build that I would be using, maybe in my clan boss team, for instance. But as you see here, without any drop defense, we could still kill stage 24 very efficiently, right? Um, without any of that. If you start implementing drop defense, you might not even need a reset. Maybe just put drop defense, newt, cold heart, cold heart, right? And an R attack. You'll be good to go. Uh, we'll try to build that team straight after this. Without any resets. Here we go. Burns will go through. And of course, we have got the blessed bash coming through again, which is going to kill the spiderlings. 
with a spider but we did hit the cap there after we mitigated the defense with the a3 we actually started to come through and finish it up so let's take our Kaimo out let's put in a another cold heart cold hearts where are you why am i looking at epics this is how good cold heart is <laughs> And who else should we use here? I'm trying to think of somebody else that would make sense. Oh, of course, drop defense champion. Um, who can we use? Maybe Ruella? We well, just use a Ruella, right? Why not? How fast is she going? 230, perfect. Is it faster than Newt? Or oh, it's not faster than Newt's. Who's faster than Newt? Do you know what? Just for the sake of it, guys, I'm just going to put Lydia in, just for the example. Here we go. So I'm going to open up with this. First choice. And here we go. Now, we should be able to just annihilate stage 24 of a team like this now because we're going to be reaching the cap. So remember, guys, the first hit before was around 600,000, right? Or 666 as a cap. So it burns coming through. One, two, three. Now we're hitting the cap, 737, whereas before we had to bank on the reset in order for that to happen. And then we should be detonating with our attack now, and it should be finished from here. There we go. Finished. So 21 seconds. So for anybody that has the luxury of a double cold heart, um, you have obviously an R attack, you have a drop defense champion, and you've got a newt. You're going to have an absolute killer of a spider team for anyone doing the stage 24, right? Once again, we're going to go through again. And we don't even need the second hit of newts, guys. So if you're thinking, oh, I can't reach um, the 245, remember that was for stage 10. We literally just need one bless bash after the drop defense, as long as you don't have like um, savage and stuff and you want to utilize other gear sets, you'll be completely fine here. One burn from R attack. And then the burns are just going to tick from these ones. We never managed to kill all of them. And it should be finished now. Pretty much after that burn ticks. We'll do this one more time. Alright, so this one's going on a bit longer. We had a bit of barrel RNG there, maybe the burn placements. There we go. We'll try that one more time. Oh, damn it. I should have sold that. I need some silver. <laughs> I need some silver. Drop the fence and weaken. Oh, we didn't have the weaken on last time. I think we got resisted, right? Boom, boom, boom. Heart Seeker. Heart Seeker. Detonate with our attack and it should be finished. There we go. 23 seconds. So, um, really good team, right? For anybody out there. Free champion in Lydia. Granted, you've done faction wars. That were two rare champions. Free champion and a recent fusion. Um, hopefully, you guys can utilize a team like that to start farming spider and stuff in a quickest time possible. Uh, once again, you, or you can just utilize your hard teams. But I'm pretty sure you don't need me to tell you how good Newt is if you're more like Endgame, right? Um, Phantom Shogun's Grove. I don't really have a team. I haven't climbed yet. But of course, he's going to be phenomenal. I've showcased this in teams in the past. Um, can we quickly build a team? Maybe. Have I got a preset for this, maybe? I don't know. My gear is all over the place. I don't even know if I've got the thresholds. What team is this for? I'm looking at this team like, what is that? I've never seen that team in my life. All right, um, let's take out... We can keep Coldheart in there. Where's Newt? Recently used first. Get Newt in there. He is a dungeon, so I'm going to put him in the lead position. Uh, just for other champions if we need it, as an example. But a reset in there. The thing is, he's going to be my enfeeble tank. Or will it be somebody else? Do you know what? We might have to just put a Kanjafon in there, just as my enfeeble tank. Candy. I'm actually going to do a guide on Candy soon, guys, if anyone that's interested. So, we're going to go Mithrala Life Bane here as our clan. Oh, Riho Bone Spear. Riho! It's, been, it's our chance to use Riho again. Hopefully, we've got a speed tune going. <laughs> Please, fingers crossed. Um, but just as an example, so we go through here. And Feeble Tank's going to go onto our uh, Kanjapon, of course. Boom. And watch the damage that comes out from New. Remember, we're not on the highest stage, guys. But we're literally reaching the cap. This will carry all the way up until stage 25. Um, actually, maybe 24, right? Because of his affinity. He's going to be phenomenal here. And get a reset. Can we get a kill on stage 15? Maybe climb a floor or so? Then here we're going to cleanse. Come through with another nuke. Boom, boom, boom. One max HP. And just go for a hit here, maybe. And the boss should be down. So basically, I'll be using a very similar team to this personally. But there has been many teams that's came to fruition since the original strategies, right? That I put on the channel. 
but you can just see the full value as long as you can reach that cap in the right scenario with maybe a drop defense or a savage set he's going to be phenomenal for the phantom shogun's growth and that kind of carries into the um, Sandover's Necropolis as well. I believe it's six minutes um, for the run with Godseeker and Neri. Um, for anyone that wants the duo strategy, if you don't have the luxury of having a ninja, um, can definitely be utilized in some of the highest floors of Sandover's Necropolis. Um, Dragon's Lair, um, I utilize him in a team like this. I just made it the other day just for you guys. But it's the same team that I used before, I guess. But the main thing I want you guys to take away is how much max HP um, he's dealing against the boss. Like everyone has different compositions, whether that be Seer or Kaimars and stuff. But this is more of a Poison Explosion team. Um, I love Corpus the Corruptor, one of my favorite champions. So I've been utilizing him where I can, I guess. He's going a bit too fast, though, for this team. Not speed tuned, it's fine. Leave it, YST. Stop stressing. <laughs> we just want to see some big damage numbers. That's all that we're after today. So Poison's going out. Definitely speed tune, guys. You know, make sure he's not taking too many turns. It seems like he's taking a thousand turns before anybody even gets a turn here. Are going at 245 speed. And we're going to have our Hex Champion in Yumiko sending that out so we can send some debuffs back. And we're then going to do a cleanse with... Uh, we'll look at the Bless Bash. The damage is really nice, right? We're going to be cleansing here. Boom. And uh, all we need is another reset here. We're going to get another Bless Bash in. So boom, boom, boom. Numbers going through. As you see, it's all over the place because we haven't optimized in terms of the damage that I usually have at 245 or so, 240%. So I'm more hitting the cap at those kind of thresholds, right? And then poison should tick and then it should be finished, right? So in a more speed tune scenario, I've seen as low as 57 seconds. This is where my best time came from. And then um, 101 minutes 15 without the speed tunes, right? Just because I needed to utilize for spider 10. So really cool for the dragon that's going to carry into the normal mode as well. And last but not least, let's just do um, a finite team. I've not made a pure composition for finite hard, but definitely really, really strong for Terminator control um, for those teams. But they're very niche, right, in the ones that you can build. So hopefully this one can... Usually I use a law here. But I do want to showcase the max HP as well. Uh, let's just see how it goes. I might just do a manual to showcase the damage. So here we go. Poison's going out. We can extend it with our Dark Kale. Love Dark Kale. Any Dark Kale lovers out there? I like to utilize him. Boom. A reset coming through. Get that weaken. It's gonna be really good for surviving the waves, man. Really good. Here we go. Man, this <laughs> my team, I'm gonna have to do a whole revamp on my account. Catch me on a stream soon, trying to fix my account, guys. So here, um, I have got a preset where he's going to open up with his... Um, there we go. So we've got A1s going through. Let's just try and showcase it. I'm just going to do manual for now so we can break it down. I don't want anything messing up here. So, all right. So we're going to go here. Now, watch the term here, guys, all right? Boom, boom, boom. Chunking that down. Very similar to a law. Um, going to be very phenomenal for having that full control. Um, then if you have the uh, luxury of a decreased speed champion, being able to use that is going to really help you out. I'm going to play some poisons here. Why not, Dark Hill? So we're going to chunk this down one more time. I do want to get a drop defense out before we um, showcase. All right. Can we not fill up the debuff bar here? Hopefully. I think we have, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, no. We're going to have to wait. We're going to have to wait. Let's do an A1. Um, I guess we could just do this now. Let's just do it just a week. Can we hit the cap? Uh, so we never reached it. Let's just detonate now. I should not place those poisons. It's combustible. Let's get a reset. Now we can get the drop defense on. Oh, we haven't got a weaken on yet, though. Can we get a weaken on? Yeah, let's do it. There we go. Weakens out. DNA. Man, we're just toying with this uh, finite now. DNA. Can we get the final hit coming out from Newt? All right, we've set it up for you, buddy. We've set it up for you. So here it comes. Bless Bash. Boom, boom, and we didn't even need the third hit, but we managed to hit the cap towards the end for stage 25. So you can really see the ways that even on um, full auto, let's just try it in the background. Um, he's really going to utilize his skill set to his advantage and, you know, control the term eater in both hard mode and the normal. He's going to be placing some decreased attacks for the waves if you don't have like a explosion team like a Seer or Elenaru. Really going to help you out. 
And then he's also going to have decreased attack on the boss. So maybe if you've got a heal reduction with someone like um, a cold heart, um, you can obviously, if he hits you, you can have some damage reduction coming in your way so you don't get absolutely wiped. So a lot of value and definitely a god of the finite, right? Really, really good. So let's see what we can do here. Hopefully we can have some full coverage. So boom. Okay, once. We do kind of want the decreased speed. Do you know what? I actually want to see. So turn me reduction. Nice. Is our... Oh, so we haven't got him. Ugh. If he goes in for the max HP now, it might not be good. But let's see how much damage we do. Look at that. Look at that, guys. Look at that damage. Can we get decreased speed out? Ooh, we're just out of sync. That's fine. We'll take a hit now. But because we've got decreased attack, look at that, guys. It's actually pretty good that that happened there. So decreased attack came out. Nobody died because, we, you know, we've got some coverage going on. So boom, we just need to crack the shield. Oh, we never got all of it. We get the final hit in there, though. Loads of poisons. Is he going to die from the ticks? Yes, he is. So not a perfect team, but hopefully you guys can see the true value you can bring into a finite composition. Um, is the faction walls open? Hopefully. No, it's Sylvan Watchers. Well, I shouldn't be saying no. Maybe push up towards an Eternal Soulstone soon. Maybe get six-star newts. But yeah, guys, I guess that's going to be all for today's video. I feel like we covered everything. Actually, it's not going to be the end of the video. We need to just quickly show some Hydra. Um, so I just want to give an example of like reaching the cap once again. Same build, 209% crit damage, right? So boom. So with drop defense and weaken with someone like Lydia, we are going to reach the cap, right? So boom, boom, boom. 305, 305, 305. This is just the brutal as an example. But you can see it's going to be completely fine. But now if we do this again, now we're not going to utilize the drop defense or the weaken. So we're going to get the block buffs up. We're just going to do this or something. It doesn't really matter. And then we're going to go for it. 258, 258, 257, 271. So we're just falling short because we haven't mitigated the defense yet. So it really comes down to, do you have the stats in order to reach the cap? And if you are using drop defense, you don't need a savage build, right? You'd be going something like Relentless for Hydra. That's the ways that I'd be utilizing it. You could be going Reflex for Elsewhere or Savage for the Spider. It really comes down to the individual and where you're trying to use your new as a whole. But I showed it in like decent gear, not the best in the game, right? Uh, this is pretty average, I would say, uh, for like taking on the content that I've been doing. We did stage 10 of the hard. We did um, the stage 25 of Fire Nate. We did stage 10 of the Dragon Hard as well. We did Ultra Nightmare Clan Boss. And we was only utilizing crit damage at like 206%. So if you can really optimize this, get some better crit damage gauntlets with ascensions or better crit damage in your substats or simply just not using reflex if you don't want to and really been maxing your build you definitely see a huge potential coming out from Newt's. But um, yeah, I guess that is going to be all for today's video, guys. If you did enjoy it, be sure to hit that like, subscribe button. Let me know in the future if you do want to see some builds like this, where it's not fully like top of the range, like 260% crit damage and 300 speed, you know what I mean? Um, I really wanted to focus a bit more on the mid-game progression. Um, have an amazing rest of your day, and I'll catch you guys in a video soon. Peace.